Good morning, friends. In the previous lecture, we learned about many diseases belong to central nervous system. Where we learned about what is encephalitis, what is encephalopathy, how they are different, and we learned the different causes of acute encephalitis. In which we learned about the whole classification of arboviruses which are causing the encephalitis, and in detail we learned about Japanese encephalitis, Nipah, and Hendra virus. So uh, today we will going to learn about the causes of the chronic encephalitis, that is the slow virus and the Peyer's disease. So let's start. So what is slow virus and Peyer's disease? They are causing. So features are same for both the slow viruses disease or the Peyer's. That is, they are causing the neurodegenerative. So here they are occurring the degeneration of the neurons. and they can affect both humans and animals now what are the characteristic feature of this neurodegenerative condition that is there is a long incubation period so as the name suggests that it is a slow virus disease that means the incubation period that is uh, the time from which the patient got the infection and the time when the symptoms will be manifested so the gap between the two is the incubation period so it will be very lengthy it can be months to years then these viruses and these prions they have a predilection for the cns so they are involving mainly the central nervous system and invariably fatal so the patient will going to die only then there is a strong genetic predisposition so it runs among the families and it lacks antigenicity that is there are no antigens over this uh, when there is infect occurring the infection of these viruses or the prions and so there will be no immune reaction also so there will be no cytopathologic effect in the vitro now what are these uh, viruses slow viruses so these are the progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy that is the jc virus that cause disease in the humans then subacute sclerosing parenchymatitis that is been seen after measles infection so usually those person those children who have the measles primary measles infection they later on after many years have this slow virus disease that is a subacute sclerosing parenchymatitis then third is the progressive rubella parenchymatitis that is after the rubella infection so these are the three disease caused by this slow virus disease because why we are saying slow virus because there is a longer incubation period so these all are common in the human beings then in animals is the visna and the medi virus so that is in the sheep then among the prions that is the kuru disease then kruts fels jacob disease which is the most common in the humans then just man strossler shinkers disease fatal familial insomnia so all are these four diseases are in the humans then in animals scrapie that is in sheep and goats bovine spongiform encephalopathy in cattle transmissible mink encephalopathy in mink chronic wasting disease so at least these humans disease must be learned kuru is very important that is seen in cannibalism then kruts fels jacob disease that is the most common among the prions so these two three disease must be learned by heart that is these are the disease caused by prions in the human beings then progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy so this is caused by the polyoma virus that is the jc virus and what is being seen in this uh, infection that is multifocal so there are multiple areas of demyelination what what do you mean by demyelination that is the neurons have a covering sheath which is a protective sheath known as myelin sheath the neurons have the myelin sheath so this myelin sheath is being removed that is the demyelination so this occurs in the multiple areas throughout the brain then the deformation of both astrocytes and the oligodendrocytes so these cells will be deformed and in which uh, usually in the 
AIDS patient who are immunodeficient or the patient having the malignancies like of these blood malignancies, uh, these leukemias or the transplant where the transplantation has been done of any organ. Then what are the symptoms seen? So these are the patients who are at risk for having this disease. Then visual deficit, mental impairment. The patient may be uh, featured with the weakness, ataxia, that is usually the uh, movement in coordination and sometimes seizures. Then diagnosis. So uh, when we are diagnosing the MRI scan, so in MRI scan, you can easily notice the multiple areas are there which are asymmetrical and there is a lesions in the white matter of the brain then uh, PCR you can uh, detect this virus from the CSF CSF usually when we are going for any uh, this biochemically uh, we want to check for the CSF so usually uh, it is normal and occasionally lymphocytic pleocytosis can be noticed so mainly PCR that is for detecting the virus an MRI scan to suspect for this slow virus disease. Then another cause that is the measles encephalitis that also come under the slow virus disease. So that has been seen after the measles infection and seen in very rare patient having this CNS complication. Usually in the children of less than two years of age and what is the disease is being called that is a subacute sclerosing that is a sclerosis occurs in the brain parencephalitis so it is also known as post measle encephalomyelitis there is occurring inflammation of this myelin sheath and also uh, known by the another name that is a measles inclusion body encephalitis It is a slowly progressive disease. All the slow virus disease are slowly progressive. Seizures can be the manifestation. Then progressive deterioration of the cognitive and so both the motor function and the cognitive function are being deteriorated. Rare 1 in 1 to 1, point, uh, 1 to 5 lakh measles cases. So out of 1 to 5 lakh cases only one case is there. Seen, I have already told you that in less than two years of age, it is uh, they are at more risk if they are having this primary measles infection, and after seven to thirteen years of infection. What are the clinical feature of this SSP? That is a subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. That is the progressive intellectual deterioration, focal, or there can be generalized seizures. So seizure is a very common point for this SSPE that is seen in the measles infection, post measles. Myoclonus, uh, what is myoclonus? That is there is a jerky, uh, jerky involuntary movements. So jerky uh, movements and ataxia, that visual disturbances. It can be fatal within one to three years of onset. So in May, uh, in the slow virus disease, although there is a long incubation period, but uh, once the disease sets in, then it is rapid progressive. So mortality rate is of 10 to 20 percent. How we, we can diagnose that is with the help of CSF. So there will be gamma globulins will be raised. Then high titer of antibody to measles virus that is also very useful that if you will check for the antibody level against the measles virus that will be very high. Viral antigen that you can detect and viral genome that is PCR. Now comes to the prions. So what are prions? So prions are basically the proteins. So these are the infectious protein particles. And what is important for that, that they don't have any nucleic acid. So that is very important to remember that these are the protein infectious particles and there is no nucleic acid. They are filtrable like virus and that is the most resistant form. So when we categorize uh, uh, what are the different 
like we are if we are uh, categorizing like uh, envelope viruses bacteria fungus so what are most resistant so among them the most resistant on the top list is the prions so they are the most resistant form to be sterilized then scrapie being the prototype that is the first been detected so what is the pathogenesis that is when these infectious protein particle enters the body and they are first carried to the brain so there occurs a misfolding of this protein that is initially exist in the prpc uh, these proteins are present and they are being converted to the uh, another conformation that is the isoform that is the prpsc and these prpsc they are aggregated as the so they are deposited as the amyloid like plaques in the brain and then these are being internalized by the neurons will uptake these proteins and they will uh, accumulate inside the cytoplasmic vacuoles so in the brain what picture you will get that is the spongy form appearance so the incubation period that is the same in case of slow virus disease or prion that is in the months to years once the disease starts in progression is very fast so in the prodromal phase that is uh, three to five months so there will be loss of uh, first they will prodromal phase then they will be the loss of muscle control shivering myoclonic jerks tremors loss of coordination and rapidly progressive dementia dementia means that is the loss of memory then that can occur within one year of onset of disease so you can easily see the mortality is almost 100 percent and uh, and uh, you can say that is the progression of the disease uh, once the disease sets in it is very fast then kuru disease that is being seen in the eastern highland of new guinea and it is seen in the post cannibalism that is in the in uh, certain parts there is a ritual of cannibalism what is this cannibalism that is the practice of uh, uh, eating the uh, dead bodies so any uh, related person who is being infected so uh, eating their dead bodies so if that person is being infected so that infection is being transmitted to those person who have eaten these uh, dead bodies so that is the cannibalism but now this practice has been ceased so then comes the Creutzfeldt Jakob disease which is the most common disease among the humans uh, for this prions so uh, what are the symptoms in this disease that is the dementia is there and myoclonus it is uh, progressive and that occur within a year of onset there are different types of these Creutzfeldt Jakob disease one is the classical or the sporadic so maximum uh, cases of this CJD are type of classical or sporadic so there is no cause spontaneous they occur uh, misfolding of the prion protein so there is no previous cause for that so maximum cases come under this classical then another comes the familial that is approximate 15 percent of the cases come under the familial so these have some hereditary uh, history then hydrogenic so hydrogenic is something related to medical so that is when they are uh, occur some either uh, there is a history of blood transfusion or some uh, organ transplantation like uh, or there is a, like taking up of any hormonal therapy like gonadotropin hormone therapy or corneal or meningeal transplants then there is a variant cjd so that is being seen in uh, usually in the younger age group that is a less than 30 years of age and is seen in those patients who have the history of eating the beef so that is being contaminated with this prions how to diagnose so uh, as it is a disease of proteins and confirmation has been changed what is the difference between this prpc that is a normal protein and the prpsc so prpc which is the initial protein that is the prion protein cellular therefore c is there prion protein cellular and this prpsc that is the prion protein scraping 
so usually the structure of this prpc is uh, that is it is rich in alpha helix and little beta structure whereas when this conformation has been changed to this scrapy so it becomes globular initially it is elongated later on when this convert this conformation change so it become globular and less alpha helix and more beta structure so that is the difference between these two so we are measuring this conformation and there are many immuno assays are there where you can uh, detect this conformation change that brain biopsies where you will see spongy form degeneration and astrocytic gliosis and what is important that there is no inflammatory response so in the slow virus disease or in the priors as there is no antigen so there is no uh, inflammation your immune system will not work that sequencing the pr np gene and electroencephalogram that will be abnormal how to treat so there is no known effective therapy for this several trials are being done using the quinacrine anti prp antibodies have shown some uh, positive result to eliminate prpsc from the culture cell so trials are being gone but are being uh, done but uh, there is no useful treatment is still available now we how we can prevent this infection that is important because we don't have any treatment available so that is uh, we as we, i have told you that this is the most resistant form to be sterilized so what we can do autoclaving at 134 degree centigrade any article like you are using in the ot's uh, and instruments so you have to autoclave if you want to make it free from prions autoclave at 134 degree centigrade for 1 to 1.5 hours then treatment with one normal NaOH for 1 hour or 0.5% sodium hypochlorite for 2 hour so that's all uh, for this slow virus and prions disease hope you must have learned thank you for paying attention